I specialise in skin operations. Today, I'm removing small but potentially dangerous growths. Saw bit coming up now, okay? Well done. If you feel anything sharp, let me know and I'll give you some more local. We have a number of cases, all of which are likely to be skin cancer, which are either of the type that will just grow unless they're removed, or even sometimes the type that can spread and kill people. The feeling that my surgical skills are helping to treat cancer is really satisfying. When I stick this knife into someone, if they've got a skin cancer, I feel happy about what I'm doing and I enjoy it. But there is one group of patients that we seem unable to help as much as we'd like. These are the growing number of obese people who are now coming in for surgery. What we've been doing in this operating theatre this afternoon has been quick. We've seen lots of surgical patients really fast, but in hospitals all over the country, obese patients are bringing surgical operating lists to a standstill. They complicate the surgical process at every level. They've got tons of other illnesses which make their surgical diseases complex. They're extremely difficult to anaesthetize and they're difficult to operate on as well. This makes surgery riskier for thousands of patients every year. But it's not just a problem in surgery. I'm also a mother, so I'm concerned how this explosion of obesity will affect our children and their children too. What I want to do is look at some of the really interesting new research that's trying to explain what obesity might all be about and some of the ways that we might go about fighting this fat epidemic. On the face of it, there seems an obvious reason why the last 20 years have seen our weight soar. We're eating more food than we need because it's more easily available than ever before. I'll just try a little bit yeah, of that. Sure. That's right. go. <laughs> that is delicious. Here in the modern developed world, food is everywhere and it's rich in calories.